Welcome, welcome to the show. All right. What's going on, guys? Hey, guys. Cool. Check it out. These people are here to see you and talk about stunt work. Sweet. Oh, there he is, cracking one open. It's a little early for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs the Red Bull, though, right? Yeah. Got to have the energy. Cool. I'm trying to pump it up here. Yeah, right on. So how's it going? This Very good. Awesome. Very good? Right? I just came here from Japan. From Japan? They flew yep. all to Japan? Right on. Before Welcome shooting. to the show. Give it up for Michi. Come on. Yeah. He's here to talk to you. Right on. Just for you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't? Oh, take, take all that applause back. Get back. <laughs> Sonny, how are you? Jet lagged also. Jet lagged also. Did you just come in today? I, I flew in uh, a day ago. From a Hawaii. day ago. Yeah, I live in Hawaii now. Whereabouts did you come from? Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got a three-hour time shift in the positive direction, yeah? Um, what? I'm three hours behind. That's right, Hawaii's three hours. Excuse me, I take that back. Right. So you're, so you're three hours ahead. You're like, time to go party, and your body's like, no, no, go to no sleep. partying, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a different time. Right on. <laughs> well, cool. Well, definitely great to have you. Eric, you all right? You good? You having fun? Yeah, man. I'm, um, things have been busy and crazy and wild, but it's been, uh, it's been good. It's been, ni it's been nice to not be injured. That's what's not been be, nice. Not be injured? Yeah. 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 <laughs> stunts and injury go hand in hand, so. Yes. Uh, it's stunts. It's been nice to feel comfortable. <laughs> oh, right on. Well, yeah, it's, it's great to have you guys. Thanks for being at the show. Thanks. I mean, it's fantastic to not just have, you know, every, you know, the stars. We have the people that were behind the scenes doing the hard work. I mean, how, I'm just going to throw out the blanket question, how was doing that back in the day, to get associated with something like the Power Rangers? Um, you know, I downplay it, so much, but in reality, blessing. Um, I started with Rangers second season Mighty Morphin, and it was kind of a strange, weird about way that, uh, you know, Walter Jones and I used to work at uh, Universal Studios. Walter was in the the Wild West show, stunt show, and uh, the, um, what's the one, the, the ghost dude? Uh, Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he used to do the Beetlejuice show. I was at the Conan uh, stunt show. And Walter and I used to hang out a bit. Both of us were also professional dancers. So one night we're kind of cruising around Hollywood, and he says, hey, I just did this kids TV show, man. It's like colored you know, superhero guys from Japan. I said, you know what? I, I grew up watching that stuff in Hawaii. So the first one I remember, Michi would know, is Gorenja. You guys familiar with that Gorenja. series? Gorenja. 1976. <laughs> so I had no idea that I was going to end up getting into this. And um, the one thing that I think a lot of people take for granted is because this is a kid's TV show, they don't look at the stunts that people are doing as something that is uh, difficult but I'll tell you right now, whether you're in the, the helmet and the suit, a monster suit, a henchman suit, foot soldier suit, giant robot suit, that's not easy work. It's extremely claustrophobic for one. I, I've had some um, friends who are big, big stunt performers who may have tried out to uh, do some of the live show appearances just to go out and, you know, crowds and promos for the TV series and they freaked out putting the helmet on so <laughs> to be able to do certain things uh, Eric can attest to this uh, you know Eric is a phenomenal uh, gymnast and I used to be in awe of Eric when we'd work out and then for him to do what he could do in the helmet I would just go wow really really amazing to see so um, my experience has been Something that I've taken from uh, working on Power Rangers, uh, a few episodes with Beetleborgs with Michi. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, <laughs> well, I was stunt coordinator. I, and then working Kamen Rider Dragon Knight with Koichi. Uh. I've taken that into uh, my uh, career as a stunt person. 
which Rangers was my film school. So that, that's basically what my experience has been. And it's continuing to grow and grow and grow. And even though I downplay it, when people are like, oh, he used to do Rangers, I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no I've done other things. But end of the day, you know, I was just walking over here with, uh, there's this gentleman, right? Sitting right there. And he was telling me that he's been into this. He came all the way from Baltimore. And I thought, wow, he's been in it since day one. He runs a podcast. It's an amazing thing to see. So uh, thank you, everyone, for, for your support of this franchise. Yeah. I mean, I mean even, even back in the day, as far as the America is concerned, I mean, Power Rangers was, was, was big. I mean, of course, Japan had had the Sentai series for a while to bring that all over. I mean, I know for me personally, it was like, it's everything I wanted, robots, monsters, and martial arts. And just, I mean, you guys doing all that definitely helps make the show what it is. So definitely thank you for that. So. Let me tell you guys, uh, it was interesting uh, listening to Sunny just now because I grew up watching um, Ultraman. I grew up watching, uh, if you guys remember, uh, hold on, Inframan. 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 Do you guys remember Inframan? Inframan. He was this bug-looking creature with, you know, a, a very Power Rangery in the sense of his outfit, but, you know, he had these antennas, and he, you'd hear the bug sound, and he'd leap in the air and start doing martial arts, and I, I was in love with that stuff. Prince Planet, I mean, I, those were all the things I grew up on, and so uh, there used to be another thing back in the day when MTV videos came out called Friday Night Videos, and I'll never forget, I, I was living in Boston at the time, never been to California, and didn't have any aspirations to come to California. And I'm watching these music videos, and all of a sudden I see this guy go, ah, you saw, you saw! And, I, and he's inside of some kind of, like, a, a vehicle of some sort. And I'm like, what was that? Like, what was that? You know, and then suddenly, you know, we're talking 10 years later, I'm now auditioning for Power Ranger, And... I, you know, to look at that footage and realize that was what I saw 10 years ago <laughs> in Boston on, a, on, mm -hmm. on like an MTV music video thing. And so, um, you know, as Sonny was saying, Power Rangers, uh, that was a lot of work, boy. I've done a lot of projects from Power Rangers to now. And to this day, Power Rangers was um, this... <laughs> Baptism by fire, Power yes. Rangers was. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Power Rangers was intense, man. Uh, you guys remember Pudgy Pig? Okay, I've done a lot of costume work. Pudgy Pig is about a solid four and a half to five inches of foam latex. And to wear that costume outside on a 70, let alone a 90 degree day, you're going to sweat a lot. And... Uh, when I tell you your, your average was 16.9 ounce bottle of water, that's what you're pouring out of your boots. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. when you watch these episodes and, you, and, and people think, you know, a kid's show, it's not that much work. <laughs> it's the most work I've probably ever done. Truth. And, and uh, you know, and then the craziest thing of all, which I never understood, uh, the production company only had one helmet. So each helmet, there was only one. And so suddenly they're, <laughs> they're telling you to take reactions and falls and explosions, but you can't hit your head. And you're like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I'm going to fall to the ground. How do I not hit my, my head? You can't. Like, we, we have to protect the helmet. And then you're trying to figure out, like, uh, okay, I'm not sure how that's going to work. And so you start learning. Uh, it changes your skill set. Um, you start learning all kinds of things. The wardrobe people had a huge learning curve. Uh, the, the type of metal uh, base that's on this microphone, that's kind of what the boots were that the putties wore. They were called mm -hmm. red wing boots when we first began on season one. Mm -hmm. And they had us trying to, to do butterfly twists and kicks uh, on rocks and dirt with cowboy boots. Uh, I'm going to die that way. <laughs> You know, uh, the putties had a scuba suit. Can you imagine a scuba suit outside today in, in 85 degrees? Right. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. so, <laughs> you know, uh, and in the morning, uh, let, me, let me tell you something that's really funny. In the morning, this is what you would usually see. 
first of all, it's very cold in the morning. You're wearing spandex. It's, it's, there's morning dew all over the grass, so it's slippery. And if you do a backflip, you're probably going to land on your head, neck, and shoulders. But you see a bunch of putties, and they're kind of just like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's, man, when you say labor of love, man, I, I can't express to you enough. When I first started Power Rangers, I would have, you know, I say I would have done it for free. I basically did, <laughs> but I would have done it for free. It was, it was truly living out your, your, your biggest childhood dream. Mm. But then you started to learn the business behind the R, and you know, then it got a little tough every now and then, but it was film school. You started learning other people's jobs. You started learning about using you know, uh, lenses and a 5.9 on baby legs to kind of create the Zord feel and looking up and sh kind of creating you know, how big and massive this, the, these Zords were. And I mean, it was, it, was, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. <laughs> right on. <laughs> a lot of work. Okay. Meet you? Talk? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming today. Uh, I'm Michi. I was born in Japan, Tokyo, Japan. And uh, when I was uh, in my childhood, I saw a Kamen Rider original and Power Ranger, I mean, Go Ranger, right? That's original. When I saw it in my childhood, oh my God, it is my hero, I thought. And when I was at 16 years old, I joined the original Power Ranger and the Kamen Rider stunt team. And then I become a stuntman in Japan. And then I learned the Japanese style, of course, the original. The uh, Power Ranger, I mean, Go Ranger, and also Kamen Rider style, I learned a lot over there. And I came here uh, when I was the 29 to be a stuntman and stunt coordinator. And I got the part, Masked Rider, and suits acting, work, and also stunt coordinator in the United States, in Hollywood. And then when I got the job uh, in Hollywood, okay, the, uh, our style is completely different from the American style. Right. Because you guys are so funny, you are, you are talking about, but the, our style is like more like, hey, Michi, you do it. You just fall down over here. You just oh. kick him in costume. But uh, that's a common sense. We cannot see it. That's no excuse, no, no excuse. Don't say that. We are the uh, stunt actor. That's your job. You do it. Yes, sir. That's our style. Hey. That's our hey. style. And then the, uh, and when I came here, but uh, I was, I didn't talk in English at all. Zero, fast, zero. And I try to understand American culture and also English. That's a fast step for me. But I know the stunts and how to shoot uh, in Japan. That's why I brought us such a uh, method to the Hollywood. And then when I was there, so the, uh, I look for, looking for the uh, stunt man for the uh, masked rider. But the uh, uh, masked rider style is completely different style from the American style because the, we are in costume and also we are talking and acting and also the uh, stunt work, everything we have to do it. So the, uh, I did the audition a lot, but I couldn't see uh, stuntman matching for the uh, masked rider. That's why I decided to I do a stunt coordinator as well as the uh, stuntman in costume. And then when I did, uh, uh, and uh, go ba going back to the uh, Japan, so when I did uh, stunt work, they are completely strict and no excuse all the time. We have to like, Always at on set, we have to sit down like this, quiet down, and only smoking like this. <laughs> That's the Asian right. style. Right. But the American style, no smoke. And then we are talking to each other on set, and then the uh, AD said, quiet, please. <laughs> That's the American style, I thought. And oh, this is a completely uh, culture difference, I thought. Yeah, but uh, this was fun for me, because the American style is like more like, Enjoy the stunts, enjoy the work. And that Japanese style, Japanese style, like more like run everything like that. Mm. So, and then the uh, in costume and also stunt coordinator, stunt coordinator in U United States in Hollywood, it was fun because everybody is open mind and also the American people like accept another culture. Mm. It was great. 
and then the I did the uh, second unit, uh, uh, second unit director, stunt coordinator, and the stuntman in Mask Rider. And after the Mask Rider first season done, I move on to the uh, Beetle Box and the Metallic Sports. And I met Tony, right? Yeah. And then the uh, yeah, and then he is working for the uh, uh, Beetle Box, and there was Beetle Box Metallics, and right. then uh, it was great fun in costume and the American the sunny hot uh, <laughs> temperature. It was just uh, <laughs> shooting <hot>. in <laughs> desert, right, all the time. Shooting yeah, shooting, desert. and we have no no break. But it was fun. I learned a lot in Hollywood. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, you can certainly may. Yeah. So, you know, it's also interesting <laughs> listening to what he's describing right now because uh, people always went, man, Eric, you know, you started out on Power Rangers. You didn't, I didn't do the pilot, but every episode after that, I was, um, I was originally brought on because uh, Walter and I did Star Search. Do you guys remember Star Search? Oh, you guys are you, old. You got, a, you got a young <laughs> crowd. You guys are old. <laughs> Some couple, yeah. Before America's Got Talent, there yeah, was Star right? Search. And, uh, and, uh, uh, what's it, The Voice, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know. But the, Walter and I were in a music group together. And, oh. uh, and so, you know, and we lost. <laughs> what, what was the name of your musical group? Uh, it was called, uh, we didn't name it, just to be clear. I did not name this. I'm not owning this. But Five is a Jam. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I will say this. Uh, the year that we competed, uh, uh, Justin Timberlake was nine years old. Christina Aguilera was there. Britney Spears was on there. Uh, Dave Chappelle was on there. And uh, there was a, a little girl, uh, like black girl group called Girls Time. And then later they became Destiny's Child. And it was Beyonce when she was 12 years old. No. So, who would have guessed? Like you know, that one moment we were there and met all the people that we met, and it was that was a real cool privilege. But the f Japanese footage is what I see. every time people are like, "Oh my God, you're so good!" I was just doing my watered down version of the work that these guys put in because I saw behind the scene footage of stuff that I would never have done. I saw the guys take their ankles wrap the cable around their ankle, uh. jump, and someone pulled, and they did what looked like tr three full twists before hitting the ground. I will never forget that. I'm like, I will never do that. <laughs> you know, I saw things that you look at and you go, and then how much did they get paid? Like, <laughs> and you go, that's it? Are you kidding? Yeah. Japanese so, style. These guys, these guys, yes. were, they, they, you know, I was shocked in 1993 when Power Rangers uh, aired to find out that it had been on 30 years already. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you mean people made a lit, like they, they had families? <laughs> they had grandchildren on this thing? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I will never be that guy. And here we are, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, though, seriously, like, I, 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 I always feel like a little bit of, um, I don't, I, I don't want to say a fraud, but the work that the Japanese Jew Ranger put, that, that they put in, it will never, ever top what American, like they, they brought it. They brought it. Everything we did was all about honoring what those guys put in because right. they, paid their, they paid their dues for everybody and then some, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Definitely, you can see the influence of the Japanese stunts, even in, in you know, in the American industry. The first uh, season, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. but even continuing on, so many people that went through uh, the Saban different series mm -hmm. that it's typical now to hear an American guy do a seochi. Oh, seochi. It's falling from, falling from the back. Fall on your back. Uh, basically, a, a, a four three quarter to your back or a back three quarter. But that's become common terminology in the American stunt industry to go do a sealch, you know. So that's definitely uh, something to be said about what these guys have done. And, uh, you know, for, for like Eric, I believe you were weekly, right? So Eric was on the show. I worked as a daily, meaning uh -huh. that I came in when they needed extra people, which still allowed me to go out and do other things. Um, uh, where my career was concerned. But always going back to the series was like back to basics-ish. 
where you know sometimes you get a little flashy with other things and you might have ideas about what you want to do, but then you get humbled the minute you back, get back on set and you got to put that costume on. Um, the culmination of that for me came in 2007 when I did Broken Path with uh, Johnny Bosch, Dan Southworth, Motoko, uh, Tadahiro, uh, Koichi directing. Oh, Koichi's group. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's showing full length on um, YouTube, I think. Oh. And it, it got this really bad rap uh -huh. because, again, everybody recognized it was Power Rangers, but it was Power Rangers to the ultimate before the raid came out. So if you guys want to see some crazy, crazy stunts, working in 100 plus degrees, 100% humidity out in Brown, Texas, uh, everything that I learned on Rangers, we did on that one movie. It's 15 minutes of, oh, this is the plot, and then it's just an hour, 15 minutes of straight crazy. So if you get a chance to watch it on YouTube, check it out. It's called Broken Path. I think uh, another title of it was called Attack of the Yakuza. Oh. Oh. Right on. Would you guys be, uh, do you guys have questions for Eric or Michi? Are you guys cool taking questions? I'm going to, the gentleman right here. Were you allowed to it script? depends on the stunt coordinator. Because a stunt coordinator is reading a script, right? And then stunt coordinator think of how much how express the moves following a script. And then we are thinking of the, uh, the uh, camera angle and also the uh, storyline with the action. And then the other stunt co coordinator have to think of the story and also the uh, camera angle and also screen expression and then i'm asking uh telling the stunt guys okay can you do like this can you do like this and then the i'm telling the uh, cameraman a dp and the director director of the uh, photographer i'm telling him okay set up over here and stunt guy is moving like this main guy is moving like this and they set up from here and shooting here and then stunt guy please go flipping in front of the camera and then we attach yeah, each piece to the pillow. That's the way. That the answer? <laughs> <laughs> when, right? I fir when I first came right? on the show, they, uh, you know, uh, it's, you know how Marvel Films always has the prototype costume for the hero, and then the hero eventually gets the nice shiny one, and it looks cool and everything, and we all go, yeah! So that's, that was where Power Rangers was when, we first came, when I first got started on the show. It was, um, they had just done a pilot with uh, Tadashi Yamashita, and uh, the characters at the time uh, were oh, very true. rigid. Uh, the putties sounded like they were metal. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys remember a TV show called The Herculoids? Yes. Really? Oh, heck yeah. Hey, you that old. Was, that was Hanna-Barbera, Herculoids, <laughs> yeah. Space Ghost. Oh, yeah, baby. So Bloop and Bleep yeah. on Hanna-Barbera is I created the sound of the putties using Bloop and Bleep. <laughs> and so on, yeah. on Power Rangers, the pilot episode, they just went, <laughs> and they looked at each other. And if they got hit, it sounded like metal. And I was speaking with Haim Saban, and I said, what do you think about this? This is, this is a sound that I, I, I envision based on you describing them as being elastic and like bloop and bleep uh, from the Herculoids. And so I go, and he goes, oh, I love it. You know, I, we, we're looking for a, a, a sound. Wow. We're looking for a sound that's not aggressive, that's not really? going to scare the kids, and so on and so He goes, do that again? And I do it, and I'm thinking, I'm going to get a voiceover out of this. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to be the voice of the putties. Wow. And, and then I never hear from the guy, and then all of a sudden <laughs> I hear... The show comes out, and I'm like, hey, that's my sound. <laughs> <laughs> and so you go, hey, whatever. Because, uh, again, I'm, I was so passionate about it. I'm just, everybody bringing the art to the table. I'm like, yeah, just take it. Enjoy it. Whatever. But, you know, um, the choreography was the same. The, the, the show was pretty much um, pretty raw in that sense. Uh, when I first started, it was, holy good, the American, American, American Karate Name is Barrett. Barrett. J John Barrett. Whew! That was hard. I just pulled out of the archives. John Barrett was the stunt coordinator. Right. Uh, he did a movie called American Karate. Anyway, the point is, 
uh, he brought me on with Walter, and they were like, okay, so we're looking for acrobatics and martial arts, and David Yost and Kimberly were already really strong gymnasts, and uh, of course, Austin and Jason were freaking off. Uh, Jason was on there at the time. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, but Austin was, you know, just ridiculous. He was perfect. And then Twee. People don't really understand. Um, how intimidating would it be for one of you to come up and do a fight scene with us? That would basically be the idea. Like, like she came with a blank sheet, and she probably took some martial art classes at a local YMCA. <laughs> but other than that, she was really that raw, and she, she really had to uh, put in way more work than everyone else. And she did, she did a phenomenal. Like I was so impressed by her. Uh, Richard Brandon, who's the late Richard Brandon, who passed on, uh, one of the stunt guys for the putties would from Boston. Richie was uh, strong in wushu. Uh, he studied under a martial art instructor named Yao Li, and he was working with her up privately and trying to teach her nun shuan and all these different forms and weapons. And so when it came to the choreography, he was starting to get the crew to understand the fluidity, the dance. And it was John Barrett, the coordinator, and myself uh, who were trying to work with the cast. After a while. If you guys remember when you watched the, some of the first episodes of Power Rangers, there is a really tall putty. You guys remember that real tall putty? Real skinny and tall? That, yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, that was a guy named Bob. It was Bob and then a really big one. It was almost like uh, Abbott and Costello. <laughs> and, it was, and that was Dwayne. And those guys, you know, the putties would just constantly go side uh, to side. Yes, and that yes, was all we yes. did, you know? I remember that. And again, trying to copy Japanese footage, but doing a really bad job. <laughs> and so <laughs> then they brought in another gentleman, Isaac Florentine. And Isaac started mm. going more in the direction now of solid choreography, where you can see uh, some serious action happening that started to resemble more of the Japanese footage where they actually clearly know what they're doing. And so, uh, yeah, there you go. And to answer your question, too, in terms of uh, how much was free flow, was it choreographed, uh, in, in support of what Michi had just said. What did I say? It was choreographing with the idea of the backstory on the spot. Oh. On the spot. So, again, also touching upon the idea that you better know what you're doing. They don't have time to teach you on set. Yeah. You got to know what you're doing. And if you aren't in rhythm with whoever it is that you're fighting, with the limited amount of, you know, vision that you could see with certain things, someone's going to get blocked. And I've seen it happen. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a, a fitness champion girl who was really good with gymnastics. And uh, at, at this time, Jeff Pruitt was, was coordinating before Koichi came in. And he brought this girl on. And I recognized her from her fitness competitions. And I said, what, what are you here for? She goes, oh, I'm going to be doing stunts. I go, fantastic. So the first thing that he, uh, Jeff had her do was flip into the scene. She was playing a putty and throw a front kick over uh, the stunt doubles head. I think it might, might have been Blue Ranger. And she kicked him right in the face. Mm. Whoa. So after that, he just said, um, just do your flip flops <laughs> over there in the background. And... Uh, they were very strict at that point to make sure that, that whoever was doing stunts uh, really knew uh, how to fight and, 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 and pick up choreography really fast. So I hope that answers your question, too. Do you, do you guys remember... Sorry, that's do okay. you guys remember uh, docks? Do you remember what docks are? Those boots that look like an army boot and yeah, they come, they come with steel toes? Doc Martens. Yeah. yeah. So wardrobe had a learning curve, too. And so <laughs> Wardrobe would put the putties in cowboy boots on loose gravel, and they would take people who've never done fight scenes, as Sonny's just describing, and put steel toes in the boots. Now, what you don't understand, <laughs> what you don't understand is if you take your hands like this and you go like this, this is all we can see. <laughs> so when you see a little pink ranger coming at you, <laughs> winding up, and you've been sweating in this mask, and it's foggy, and there's not enough oh, yeah. holes, oh, and yeah. you can't yeah. see. Yeah. When you see Putty scared, they were scared. It's they, there was a reason to be scared. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times you'll hear a lot of high-pitched Putties because they're like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, my God, it's coming, and I can't see. 
And so after a while, we started figuring out taking ivory dove, or, or what, is, what is that, ivory soap, and soap. rubbing it inside the, uh, the, the shield <laughs> to try to stop it from the condensation from like blinding you, like you can't see. And so people were getting kicked in the nose, kicked in the teeth with steel-toed Doc Martens. And I'm telling you, like, I, I, and to this day, when I see pink boots, all I think, it's got Amy all over it, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Amy, yeah. you're just squeezing your knees together, and you're like, God, God. The, the other side of it is, was it, in addition to the vision, uh, <laughs> so when you put these helmets on, you oh. maybe have, at the most, half inch from... If, if that. And the helmet's pushing up on your nose. <laughs> and your teeth. Right. So you got to also consider that a lot of the costumes that were brought onto the series came from Japan. Right. And yeah. a lot of the Japanese guys are smaller than most of the Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys so, are uh, small, I, tiny. I remember having to do the Halloween episode with uh, Jason, and he was fighting a bunch of monsters. I wore the, I don't know the name of the costume, but it was the goat. Robigo. There you go. And they couldn't zip it all the way up. And the, the head wouldn't go all the way over my head. So I had to fight the whole way. <laughs> 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 then, uh, going back to the visibility of what you had with the helmets, uh, in 94, I believe, uh, at the height of Power Rangers Mighty Morphin, they decided to do a live show, a live tour. And um, I ended up going on that tour but they needed footage still to show on this giant screen of White Ranger falling out of his Zord. And at that point, I only had worn the suit maybe a handful of times before I switched over to doing a putty. But they were like, uh, okay, so here's the thing. We're gonna shoot it at this angle. You're jumping off the roof of a, like a restroom uh, at a park, and you gotta clear this sidewalk and you got to land on that pad over there. So I'm thinking sidewalks maybe six feet wide. I got to jump out, fly out. And that depth perception on my helmet, I couldn't no. see where the pad was. Oh, so my friend, no. uh, Spencer, oh, Spencer, Spencer just goes, Spencer. excuse my language, just tuck your head and look at your butthole. <laughs> so when I jumped out, I rotated so hard Oh. that I, I missed the pad, and I bounced on the grass on my butt. Boom. And I'm like, tried to play it off, but of course, you know, my, it's hurting. And they go, uh, you didn't move your arms too much. Can we do another take? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to the experience of, of what everybody's saying Who was the stunt coordinator? Uh, Koichi? Kuichi. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Kuichi is the, just, you just say, are you okay? And move yeah, on, right? Move on. Yeah. Just just do it. Sunny, you okay? Hi, right, okay. One more. Japanese. <laughs> you can't style. say no. <laughs> He's Japanese saying style. Are you okay? Can you do one more? He's really he really means to say, you gotta do it again. I'm like, okay, I'll do it again. Yep. So, yeah. Hey, do you guys have you uh, you guys know Guyver the Dark Hero? Yes. You guys know Di Guyver? Favorite anime ever. That's who he's talking about. He's talking about Koichi. Koichi was in the Kyver costume. So when you see the Kyver kick and he goes, bam. I'm telling you, man. And so Koichi is, you know, he knows what it's like to take those falls. And so he's looking at us like, you know I know. So go ahead and do it again. I, yep. I, I, had, a, I had an experience working on uh, when they were doing Zio. And uh, they had uh, uh, Makoto playing Red Zio. Uh -huh, Makoto and Makoto's known for being... Very, very strict, very hard. He wants to see impact. And for this particular shot, which he was directing, and I'm playing a cog. And uh, so Makoto's supposed to do a sidekick to my chest. Well, he does the bladed sidekick with the chest, not pushing with the heel, but side like this. I think we did seven or eight takes. And I think Koichi was just testing to see if I'd complain. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> because I know they got it in two takes, but they just said, again, uh -huh. son, you can do it again. No problem, no problem. Bam, bam, bam. And every time I got up, when I took my costume off later, I had <laughs> Bruce. A, a, you know uh, the Bruce Lee movie where Kareem kicks him <laughs> in the chest? I had that footprint right here on my chest in a, as a bruise. As a bruise. I don't know. What the next question? I got this gentleman right here on the end. Mm. 
that was a hard trip for me. That was a really hard transition. Uh, I was, I'm a, I'm a self-taught street tumbler, uh, so I trust my own natural God-given springs. <laughs> and so to trust a wire was like, and especially that a wire that tiny, I, I wasn't familiar with that. And so uh, that was Jeff Pruitt at the time. Pruitt, right? And Pruitt and Koichi actually, they were they were a team back then. And uh, yeah, that was that was a super hard transition for me. Um, the one of the gentlemen I was talking about who was working with Twee, Richard Brandon, got on the cable. He, he took an uppercut, went flipping back once, flipping back a second time. One of the cables broke. He ended yeah. up breaking his femur. Um, that was when I was done with wires personally. Um, but but that was the style that was being brought, and and I realized I I am either going to learn this new style or I'm going to be phased out. <laughs> and I decided at that time that it, the, the level of difficulty was definitely getting harder. I shouldn't say difficulty, the lever, level of hazard. In stunts, there's two things. It's, it's not if you get hurt, it's when and how bad. That's, that's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And so uh, I decided that for me, that was getting way too crazy. Um, uh -huh. It, it's it's a hard thing, and as he explained before, you know, in, in Japan they 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 go for it, man. And if you're not committed and you're not ready to to commit on that level, let's get somebody in here who's who's willing to do it. You're you're also saying the style, right? Um, definitely, that's something that that has to be taught, like an acting school ish. Mm. Just mm. even the gestures alone. Um, from my experience of what I watched, that I, that I made sure that later with uh, people that I brought in to be able to do live show stuff, there's this belief that putting on the ranger suit automatically makes you a ranger, and that's not true. I think you need to encompass the whole spirit of it. So say, for example, you know, uh, a simple gesture is something as like, look over there, come over here. Those simple things, the Japanese move a very particular way that is just more than just mimicking moving your hands. You know what I mean? There's a certain way that you gotta do it, there's a subtlety, and there's also a, a, a times where it's gotta be very dramatic. And that's something that the uh, an American stunt people had to learn yeah. to really get what the Japanese were doing in order to make that feel authentic. Because the original uh, series were fill-ins, the Americans were fill-ins for the story where you saw uh, the Japanese footage, which was typically happening in a city, right? And then before that transition made, before the Zords came in and all that kind of stuff, the American stunt people started with filling in the gaps of the storyline. Then later in uh, the successive years, uh, starting particularly in second season MMPR, that's when the Americans started doing all the action, mm -hmm. before Alpha stunts came. Michi, was there, I'm sorry, Michi, was there a, uh, did you have to learn a different style coming through here? Did you, was it, did it feel like a regression or did you have to adapt to the American way of doing things? When I'm, when I'm doing the American in Hollywood, uh, actually I learned uh, American style for sh how to shoot. Because Japanese style is for the American style. Basically, let's go decide a master shot. Master shot means main camera, main camera position for us. And then pick up a tiny piece. But uh, in most of the Japanese style is we are thinking in our mind and then attaching each pieces. And then we are shooting yeah. each pieces. And then after that, we connect it as a film. Otherwise, we have to do a many things, right? Because we do a, we shot, master shot, we shot medium shot, we shot tiny shot. It time, time, time spending, right? Mm. Yeah, time wasting time. So I don't wanna, we don't wanna be wasting time. That's why for 100 setup camera, so we do a piece, 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 piece. That's why stunt coordinator is like a, a, a kind of a director. So that's why we do a stunt coordinator means the action director. Right. Yeah. So that's why we do a small piece, action piece, action piece, action piece, and we connect, right? That's okay. our style. But uh, 
actually master style shot is like more like artist, I thought. Because uh, when we see the, uh, think of the uh, big wide map, big wide map, or oh, this is a map, so it's like a drawing, uh, uh, drawing like this. And after that, a uh, connector piece. It's like more like uh, planning style, right? So I learned that it's kind of big picture and then attaching a small pieces and then make a movie. That's the part I learned in Hollywood. Let me tell you guys, man, I wish that more of the directors and coordinators did that because there were numerous episodes. You know, you, like Sonny was saying, you have to imagine um, going home just covered in bruises and, and, you know, when I say blood, sweat, and tears, like, no joke. And so... Some of the scenes that you're watching that are on screen for, for realistically 10 seconds, maybe 15. We shot 28 takes to get that one freaking moment. And they shot it master, medium, close uh, up, reverse angle, right, reaction, yeah, yeah. cutaways. Yeah. Like we, we, and you just had to, so one of the takes, one of the scenes that you get to see for 15 seconds is. A backflip, get up, kip up, run over, backflip again, and fall. Mm. That's two backflips for one shot. Well, we shot 28 times. No. So what's 28 <laughs> times two? It's a wide shot. So that's 56 Crazy. backflips for just that one shot, and you I still have a 12-hour day left. And you're just going, I'm stupid. It's <laughs> <laughs> wasting time, huh? So... You, you, then you, you know, I've, I've been blessed enough to work on a lot of other different shows, and one of the shows I got to work on was Martial Law. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Sammo Hung, uh, Jackie Chan's oh, yeah, yeah, big yeah. brother. And How about this style? Oh, now you get to suddenly see the pieces oh, that yeah, he's yeah. speaking of. It's the Asian style. Oh, this feels so much better. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you need know? to repeat, huh? <laughs> right? And, and yet, those pieces have such dynamic energy because right. you're not oh, yeah, yeah, burnt yeah. out. I, yeah. That's right. That's awesome. Yes, man. Hmm? Twelve years old? Okay. She wants, she wants to be the next Cynthia Rothrock. Oh, I see. More than bigger, huh? Cynthia's a personal friend, so... Oh, really? I got a really good way to go about that. So. Yeah, maybe uh, you learn the... Uh, in the United States, maybe you learn the martial arts first, and also gymnastics. And in addition, acting. Acting, acting is very, very important for, a move, for the uh, stunts, too. Because the, uh, now the time, they need uh, acting, too. So you have to run first, acting first, and then martial arts, and then also the uh, gymnastics, and plus uh, action choreography, action the uh, moves. So this is the uh, combined the uh, talent for the uh, movie. Oh, I see. Are you going to acting classes? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So I'll give you my take on it, right? Um, when you watch any uh, oh, yeah. American style, Western style films. Why is it that the actor that they pick is not necessarily a martial artist? Mm. Because it's their acting that they care about more. Yes, it's important that they have the background to be able to pull off what you can do. Like in your instance, uh, I, I, I'm thinking that you want to be able to say, I do all my own stuff, right? That's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But in the Western way of filmmaking, they really look at your ability to act before the martial arts, before the stunts, before the gymnastics. So your acting, 
has to be really, really strong. If by chance yeah. you do martial arts or gymnastics and everything else, that's what will separate you from the rest of the actors when they're considering you for the role. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So to just piggyback on what Sonny just said, you, he just described and you are doing right now the path that I, that I was on. So y you would be sitting on this panel. Uh, you're 12. You'd be sitting mm -hmm. on this panel, uh, God, 38 years from now, <laughs> and you'll be sitting here going, I should have listened to Sonny. <laughs> I should have listened. Everything hurts. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, I'm from Boston originally, and I didn't know that uh, there was a stunt double. Never heard of that before. So I'm thinking all the actors did all their action. When I see Bruce Lee, after he fights, uh, wearing black Speedos, and he's got the gloves on, and he's doing the fights against Sammo Hung, and he, he, at the end of the fight, he goes, <laughs> round off back handspring, and he does a backflip over the, all the monks' head, uh, hands. And one of the cool things about editing is they actually made the sound go whoo, whoo, like he did two flips. Because <laughs> in my memory, I always remember two. But I always thought it was two also, right? And then you <laughs> But it was it only one. It was only one, yeah. But for you, I thought I had to learn how to do it. So I went and I actually learned how to do it. And I could do everything that those characters on the movies could do before I came to California. Now I'm out here. And I dabbled in acting a little, but you know, I'm thinking it's about the action and I'm gonna blow them away with my action that they're gonna have to give me the part. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so I'm sitting in rooms, I'm throwing my flips, I'm throwing my kicks, I'm doing all the things that I do and um, they're going, you know, they can't see you as an actor. They don't see you as a performer. All they see is dynamic action that you're gonna make their movie and wow, you're gonna look great as a stunt person. And so the biggest trick in the world in this business that I ended up learning way too late is, this is a hard one, because right, if you're 12 and you're doing this already, you're an artist. And there's a very difficult line between um, art and business. Mm. And so you're going to have to realize you may have to keep your art more to yourself and learn the business behind your art. And the business is, they don't want to see an actor flipping cake. They want to see, uh, it, there's a movie called Cradle to the Grave. It had a rapper named DMX who died not that long ago. Um, DMX can do a martial art movie with Jet Li, but Jet Li cannot do a rap album with DMX. That's how it works in the stunt world. If you want to be an actor, an actor can do their own stunts, but they don't really want to see a stunt person act. They're good. They're like, ah, we're good. Now, there's a new door that's been opening lately with the John Wick films and Atomic Blonde and all that, where you're seeing more uh, stunt people getting an opportunity to be stunt actors. But in the end of the day, um, try to learn about what minimum wage, you know what minimum wage is right now? What do you think it is? Min minimum wage for work. About $15 an hour. You know what it was when I was about your age? $3.35 an hour. <laughs> Do you know what some people get paid? They get paid something called scale. Is even as this table. When 10 years goes by, the table will be higher up. It'll look like we're getting paid more, but we're still at the table. We're never standing on top of the table. We're still getting paid minimum wage for where the world is at that time. Do you want to still be working at minimum wage 38 years from now? then you don't want to do stunts. <laughs> no, that's okay. You can do anything you want if you, do, if you want to do it. You trust, have to just... You trust to, to yourself. Trust to yourself. Right. If you do it. You, you already sound like you're very passionate about doing you're it. You're still 12 years old. In, in what you're doing right now, if you have... Uh, from what I'm saying from the business aspect of stuff, get out there and make your own content. There you go. Put it on online so people see what you can do. I've known uh, quite a few people who've gotten um, parts, bit parts initially, mm -hmm. and then made their way to lead roles because mm -hmm. they put their stuff out there. But again, to back up what you can do, just make sure that you have the necessary training before you step into Bingo. the room to blow everybody Bingo. away. Okay, definitely. On. Well, I, I do have to say, but unfortunately, we are out of time. Oh.
But uh, I am positive that both Sonny and Mishi and, of course, Eric, uh, if you got questions, they're going to be at their booth signing yeah. throughout the weekend. Please swing by, say hi, say thank you, ask for more advice, whatever the case may be. Can, can I just share one more thing? Yeah, please. Okay. So at some point, I think 99 was the last season that I worked on Ranger. And, uh, but I ended up working for Saban still for 20 years. At some point, back in 2012, 2013, they asked if I could inventory everything sure. from 1993, oh. 2013. So I was putting pieces with this and this and this and this. Apparently somewhere along the way, I must have taken some stuff home to either repair or work on something. And I just recently went to my storage space is there anybody interested? Oh. oh. That is the real one? A legitimate, authentic production suit from oh. Rangers. Never used. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I'll tell you right now, this is definitely a picture suit because it's flawless. I don't oh. think it's ever been worn. So... It, because of the size, it's definitely either for Walter or Johnny. <laughs> we'll discuss. I don't have even masks to ride the helmet, though. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, on. Uh, did you steal anything? Uh, that's an interesting question that you just asked. Did you guys hear what he just said? He said, did you steal anything? <laughs> <laughs> did you accidentally take something home from the set? So here's a short, here's a quick short story. I can't believe you just asked that question. <laughs> I probably phrased it poorly, and I apologize. <laughs> oh, you pr you phrased it right, actually. <laughs> so there was a producer. His name is Jonathan Zakar, and Jonathan, we shot an episode. You guys remember Pineapple the Clown? Yeah, you remember how the putties and all the characters and the little girl were turned into like stiff boards. Uh, if you come to table one one four, you will see. The putty that everyone, we were all told, don't take anything. And uh, I remember it was lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I put the putty in my car and I drove off and I came back to set. It was a little late for lunch. And uh, everyone was like, where's the putty? And has anybody seen the putty? And I was like, I was trying to play all stupid. So I'm, I, I have a horrible poker face. And so, you know, Jonathan looks at me. I get called into production. I'm sat down by uh, Jonathan Zakar and Chip. Mm. I'm, they sit me down and they go, we know you have it. <laughs> and I go, have what? <laughs> <laughs> we know you have the putty. I don't have it. And I'm thinking, I'm going to stick to my game. Like, what are they going to do? Chip comes up with this freaking brilliant thing where he says, look, at, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you go right now, and you're fired. No. Or you can get up right now. Jonathan's going to go with you, and we're going to go back to you, <laughs> your apartment, and we're going to see if you have it there. And I'm like, they can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally go, fine. And uh, Jonathan comes with me and drives the producer comes to my, my crappy old apartment, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking around, and I, I did put it in the corner of the room, so I thought maybe I could bring him in the room real quick and take him out, and he went around the side of the bed and, <laughs> and saw my putty <laughs> sitting on the floor, and he looks at me. Here. Come here, let's go. <laughs> I was once your age. I've made some mistakes in my life. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance. We'll keep this between you and I. But you're going to have to pay this forward one day. <laughs> keep it to yourself. And don't tell the rest of the cast. And that putty is sitting outside at table 114 right now, 30 years later. Now you have something to go see at his booth. Go. 
So please, thanks once again. I am apologizing we are out of time, but please give a big, Thank huge you round of applause even. to Sonny Sisson, Michi Thank Yamamoto, you. and Mr. Eric Betts. Go see them at their booths. Go take a picture with a putty. Hey